Welcome to another episode of The Coiling Solution, a place where we try to help you with awareness and actionable insights. Now, I'm going to begin this one with a quote that I love from Jim Hightower. And for folks that know me or are in my tribe, you know I do a success thought of the day each and every day that begins with a quote. And today's quote is from Jim Hightower, and it says, The opposite for courage is not cowardice, it is conformity. Even a dead fish can go with the flow. So what does that mean? You know, it takes quite a bit of work to define your purpose to begin with. When you think about passion and purpose, it takes a lot of work to even define that. And then with that in hand, you still have to set that vision. And I always say vision is across the river. You're on one side of the river and you have to get across that river. And to do that, you have to plan goals. And then once you plan those goals, those goals should direct your priorities. So you would think as you have all those things done with the high level of intention, success, Success should be in your view. Well, not necessarily. There are a lot of things that happen after that. You encounter people, you encounter environments, you encounter cultures. And at those times, in those situations, you have to make a decision. Will you continue to drive forward or will you conform? Well, to join me in that topic today is Salman Raza. Salman is joining me to discuss his book, Life's Nonconformities. He's a biomedical engineer by qualification, an auditor by profession, and a reformist and visionary at heart. He's lived on four, count them, four continents and worked in 30 countries. So he brings a lot of experience to this topic. Salman, welcome to The Coiling Solution. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for joining me. So tell me this. I always like to start here before we dive into the meat of the matter. What is one thing you might be able to share with the Coiling Solution audience that even those closest to you may not know? About, about myself? Yeah, it's, it's primarily is the inquisitive nature of mine. I, I, probably people around me knows about that, how curiosity and inquisitiveness drives me, but yes. they probably don't know the extent of it. I want to know and learn about everything and anything. So that's mm. how I describe myself. That leads right into my next question, which is you know, how did you get into this work really of helping, you know, I would call it defy conformity, your, your book title, and you can't be unclear. <laughs> when you look at your title, Life's Nonconformities, what led you to this work? It's a complex question, but I am an auditor for medical device regulation. So I, for my day job, I go in medical to medical device companies and make sure that they, they are following the rules. The device yes. are conforming before they get to into market and for patient use. So my job is to make sure that they conform to regulations. So... Technically, an auditor is traditionally non-conformance on manufacturers who are not complying with uh, regulations. Right. Uh, so that is the theme that I have taken because that's my bread and butter. However, the whole work is revolving around individual as a person. And what, what are the inhibitants? What are the non-conformities within us that is restricting us to realize our own potential. To describe that, let me explain. I explain in my book, we all know the metamorphosis of caterpillar into butterfly. Uh, every caterpillar has potential of being um, a butterfly. Not every caterpillar becomes butterfly. Mm -hmm. When I learned that statistics behind it, only one in hundred possibly two in hundred caterpillars transform into a uh, butterfly and realize their potential. Wow. Oh, I didn't know that either. And that became the inspiration that we as human, we have extreme high potential that we don't realize. And we on personal level, we have potential of just like a caterpillar. We have potential of being a colorful being like a butterfly, but our, non-conformities that we carry inside us um, they restrict us to realize that potential and the book is about identifying those blind spots that non-conformities that we have to address once we somehow overcome those and become aware of them life becomes very beautiful as i went through your book i really enjoy some of the stories and maybe you can give a brief a flyover of the interaction with colton during the auditing engagement you had with him 
so for the interest of your audience so i as i tell you uh for my day job i go meet different people every day i meet thousands of people every year so in that particular instance i was threatened as a lot of your audience may have felt in a lot of situations and i somehow came alive from that really life threatening encounter and so before i explain that event i take you maybe 10 15 years back mm. when i was doing exactly the same jobs and it was a very professional environment and very nice qualified very nice polite people but i had to write a non conformance because they were not doing the, they were doing some illegal stuff so when i communicate to them that i'm writing a non conformance even though i was 200% correct in my technical presentation but the way i presented them i put them in a very defensive mode and they kicked me out of the building mm -hmm. and i was shaking i was literally that was the most embarrassing most insulting experience of my life at that point even though technically i was right i did a lot of things wrong in that communication and then from that insulting and embarrassing episode i start learning a lot about myself mm -hmm. about personalities about communication and all those things So now fast forward back in 2016 the week after Mr Donald Trump got elected as president I'm in Tuscaloosa Alabama trying to audit this guy and I didn't know what I'm walking into he was a kind of one man band company mm -hmm. uh, and as I found out he was a white supremacist and he was insulted literally insulted being audited by a colored person by your very uh, presence your presence alone was insulting presence. to him and yeah. the, and the whole episode hopefully your audience will read the book and episode it, every step he was trying to provoke me he was trying to get reaction out of me but in that time what i had learned about myself about others about emotions about uh, egos about managing those emotions somehow I managed to use things all those aspects and techniques and even though he had access to firearm and I had to write a non conformance and I was threatened that I will not go alive from that premises mm. but by using all those soft skills I came out alive and when I was driving back to airport from his office and I was thinking how, how did that happen how did I do that and I start analyzing every step so i came back and then i shared that experience with my workplace and my colleagues a lot of people said that is very useful because at that time if you recall about november 2016 there was a lot of violence police mm -hmm. brutality and a lot of people were suffering from those incidents a lot of people my circle they said you should share that experience people will benefit from that a lot of yes. people are suffering because they don't know how to deal with those situations so your experience uh, will help so that became the motivation to write a book so the book is not for making money it's yes. not a million dollar project yeah. it's a million lives inspiration product so yeah. if if i can uh, give that awareness to million people who can somehow even take one or two things from it that's the objective. No, that's good. And my understanding is that experience became a catalyst to you also doing extensive training up to a thousand folks on an annual basis now in terms of how to use some of these skills that you've codified as a result of that experience. Is that correct? A absolutely because yeah. as soon as I started sharing because I never thought that I I'm something or I know something special. And yes. so I I start uh sharing those things and people say oh that's useful i want you to come to my team and explain all that and that's how it started so people start finding it useful especially the younger youth our youth definitely need that awareness i started giving this to my local community in houston teenagers young adults and i felt that this is the right a time for them to have that awareness and becoming aware of yourself but becoming aware of others yes and uh, identify moments when someone is trying to provoke you if we somehow manage our emotions and deal with the rational mind we can handle those situations a lot more effectively
Absolutely. There's two things that kind of jump out to me here. One is it's probably worth defining what we mean by nonconformity. When you say nonconformity, it can be something that holds you back. How would you simply define that when you say nonconformity? Literally, nonconformance means when something is not meeting a criteria. So if there is a rule, we ought to meet that rule, we nonconform. But in the context I'm presenting in the book, we are assessing against our own value, our own ego, our right. own personality. So our first job is to assess ourselves against the best of us. Yes. What is the best of us? Are we are we demonstrating what is my potential? So if I don't meet best of me criteria, I'm non-conforming. Right. So that is my criteria. Let me be clear, because I think the quote that you have used in the beginning of the program, I want to make clear that I'm not encouraging people to go with the flow and don't uh, stand up against something wrong. Oh, absolutely. absolutely 200% agree. 200%. Absolutely. This is not the intent. We are not saying accept and get suppressed. The point is assess against our own best. Absolutely. If we identify our own best self, assess against that criteria, and then it will be a non-conformance. So it's a self-improvement exercise. So the non-conformance that you asked me to define, have I met the best of me? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Good clarity. And I'll restate the quote, right? It's from Jim Howard. The opposite for courage is not cowardice. It is conformity. And let me just stop there. In other words, to surrender your belief system to surrender your values, right, is the opposite of courage, right? To not stick, stay, understand, doesn't mean totally be rigid and just push back for pushback's sake, but to do that evaluation and understand what the it is and then determine how to move through that. And so with that, now let me come back to you. So there are three big takeaway items, I think, here for people to get, and I'd love to walk through each of them a little bit. And the one thing you talk about is the use of interpersonal skills to avoid being the victim. Talk a little bit about that. There are several things, the personality type and the cultural awareness and communication. So there are so many layers of it that hopefully your audience will get to learn when they read the book. However, the main thing that I feel is the root cause is understanding the ego is important. So I, we all have ego and we need to control that emotion. We have to control that ego. So it's an example like if I'm riding in a horse. So horse should be controlled by me. It shouldn't be the other way around. So I should not be at the mercy of horse where it wants to take me. I should use that rein and then I should decide where I want to go. So similarly, if we let our ego unleashed, uncontrolled, it will take us to a territory that is harmful for us. If I manage to understand my ego and what my ego triggers are, and then I understand how ego dynamics work and someone we are interacting with, we understand their ego and what their ego triggers are, then we manage ourselves carefully. And certain skills apart from ego is the awareness of what's happening around us, body language, for example. Yes. If someone comes to us and starts yelling on a scale from one to 10, yelling at seven, very high intensity, if I start responding back at the same intensity or even higher, we are asking for trouble. It will go higher and higher and rationality will go out of window. If awareness of my what's going around me, I say, okay, this person has started talking to me at level seven. If I start talking to him with level five or even four, in few seconds, I will start noticing that their level is subconsciously adjusting to my yes. intensity. So these are the few tips that we use to becoming aware. I'm in alert, aware state, and that is changing the dynamics around me. I'll share some funny example. You may have read in my book. I'm sitting, uh, in a living room at that time my daughter is five uh, she comes to me on a di dinner table and she says daddy you're ugly and fat <laughs> and i looked at her and i'm smiling and just being analytical in approach i smiled and laughed it off 
But then I start thinking and reflecting why I'm smiling, which is an expression that if said by anyone in the world, including my wife, my parents, my sibling, anyone in the world, if they have said it to me, I would have felt totally differently. I would right. have enraged, my ego would be uh, triggered, but I'm not reacting that way. And my conclusion uh, was because I'm at no level in competition with my daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, my heart is at peace. She is not threatening me at any level, at conscious or subconscious level. Mm. I'm completely at peace with her. So that utopian state of mind helped me control my ego trigger. Of course, we cannot have that with every individual. But the reason I mentioned that if I felt with my daughter, then potentially it is possible, if not exactly the same intensity, I can be at ease whatever the circumstance. And, and we would never be able to cover it all here, but for those that are interested in what Sam, Saman is talking about, this whole idea of controlling the ego, like you talked about, and I love the example of riding the horse and the ego being the horse in that metaphor, that level of self-awareness that you just talked about with your daughter to understand how you are in a triggered state versus a non-triggered state and how to handle self-expression <laughs> as well as stress tolerance, right? All of those things fall under the framework of EQ, right? Or emotional intelligence. And I would highly recommend folks to dig into that topic if they want to have more control in, in this because to be good in the moment, you have to do some dissection before getting to the moment. You need to understand yourself at a deeper level in terms of how you might respond to be able to get in front of that response. So then the second thing you talk about is how to use soft skills for career progression. And one of the things that... I was really impressed by in your book was the different environments you had gone through, the experience with Colton, the experience you talk about with the HR manager, and because of the nature of your job, going inside so many different client facilities, right? Talk about some of the soft skills that you talk about that really lead to career progression that you've utilized and you've coached others to utilize. Yeah. The first starting point, the most important thing is the self-awareness. First, understand ourselves. So if I describe uh, our existence, it is you know, just imagine a triangle or pyramid. So there is a base of the pyramid. Uh, it's a human nature. Everyone is born with it. And then there's a second layer on top of it is the culture that we grew up in. And then the effects of it is, is our personality. So we all born with the human nature. We all feel hungry, thirsty. We have emotions and ego. Okay, so we all have that. In between, the culture is learned. We learn that. It can be unlearned, it can be learned. So that sets the culture part we need to be aware of. And then there is personality that is, again, unique to me. Mm. I'm born with those temperaments. So understanding those self-awareness, whether I like, I'm a, am I introvert? Do I like uh, to energize in my own company or I need people to energize me? So that's self-awareness. And then you identify whether I like things methodo methodologically or systematically, mm -hmm. or I'll take a relaxed approach to achieve. So all those things that we learn, I need to learn who I am, what right. my preferences are, and what our other potential uh, differences are. So if I'm aware of myself and I'm aware of people, different types that I may well interact with, it helps me formulate my response so if i see someone working in the in their own little cabin we know okay this person is maybe reflective type so i need to approach with the questions and answers differently so these soft skills help us behave in a way that we become likable yes i stop yeah. annoying people by asking them questions or approaching them in a way that is not their preferred way. So once I create that awareness around me, about me and about others, it makes a great deal. So that's one of the biggest soft skill, becoming aware of ourselves and becoming aware of people around us. And now the third one is a topic that, in my humble opinion, has become almost popular to talk about over the last, feels like the last two years, vulnerability, being more vulnerable. But it's still a 
a challenge for many leaders to actually lead with a vulnerability. So this, we say it a lot, but leading with vulnerability is still a difficult um, course for many. And so one, I, I would love you to talk about two things. One, the importance of leading with vulnerability. And then two, what have you found that helps leaders get over that hurdle to actually do it? Yeah, absolutely. Very good question. And I, I agree with you. It is becoming at the forefront in leadership talks as well. So it is linked with two things that we already have. So ego is one of them. And the other thing that you started with in your when you were quoting is a vision. Mm -hmm. if, if we are aligned and driven by the vision, that is fundamentally the most important thing for any leader for for anyone it, 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 you don't even have to be leading a company you're leading yourself you're leading yes. your family so vision is the most important thing once we know where i want to go and i'm aligned with my vision that helps me that gives me confidence that gives me purpose anything that distract me from that vision it becomes a non-issue if we are not attached to a vision then we get distracted very easily so people talking backbiting putting you down all these things they are distractors and they're noise so once you are committed to a vision all the noise becomes irrelevant that's one thing the other thing for leaders and leadership it's linked with the ego that i was explaining if i present myself as infallible I am better than you. I'm giving you instructions because I know more than you. You don't know anything. There is a difference between arrogance and confidence. Absolutely. Confidence, in, confidence is I know I'm good. And arrogance, I'm better than you. No, we are not. We are trying to go away from that. Yes. So once I start communicating with my followers, my colleagues, that I'm not better than you. I'm as fallible as human as you are. I make mistakes. You should learn from my mistakes. If I'm presenting something, it is because I have this experience. I made that mistake. So once I present myself as equal, then there is no ego involved. When I'm equal to you, you are in rational thinking and listening mode. As soon as I trigger your ego, and trying to give impression that I'm better than you, subconsciously, unconsciously, your mind is saying, no, resist that. Resist yeah. that uh, instruction because our self-respect is saying, no, I'm not That's better, right. less than you and you are not bad. So when we create that vulnerability in our communication, look, I, I am as vulnerable as human as you are. I have made those mistakes. Once we present in that fashion, you become a leader because people are not following you because they have to. Yeah. They are following you because they like to. Absolutely. That is what I mean by leading with vulnerability. And that's why I feel it's more effective. So good. So let me recap these three takeaways for folks as we begin to wrap up a bit. So first, Saman talked about the use of these interpersonal skills and again, let that metaphor stick with you of managing your ego, right? So you're on a horse, the horse should not take you where the horse wants to go. You should control the horse, visualize that horse being your ego. How do you not let your ego take you places you don't want to go? And one of the things he talked about is the difference between a triggered state and a non-triggered state. I'm paraphrasing to use my words and think about that, right? So how do you really gain those interpersonal skills to be in control? Secondly, soft skills to lead through your career progression. And he talked a lot about self-awareness and using those things to understand yourself, understand others, and therefore improve communications, help manage conflict, and so on and so forth. And you'll find with those things all throughout your career, negotiation, sales, you name it, the better you are understanding yourself and others, you'll have a smoother road. And you may feel like it's a little bit more work. It is initially, but it will pay off in spades. And thirdly, leading with vulnerability, becoming more vulnerable and saying, I'm going to say this, saying we more than you say I, not pretending that you have to have all the answers, but being a part of the we, a part of the team, a part of creating the solution, a part of saying, you know what, I don't know 
all the answers to the problems. But we collectively can figure it out together and showing that uh, you're not bulletproof, that you are fallible as well. Salman, thank you so much uh, for sharing some of your wisdom and your experiences here. Where, where can people get a copy of your book? Absolutely. So the book is available on all major outlets, including Amazon. You can also get a book on my website, SalmanRaza. Hopefully, you your audience will see the uh, website details Absolutely. in that. So yeah, book is available both on Kindle and print version. And uh, yeah, absolutely, we'll have it all in the show notes. And as always, hey, thank you so much for joining us, Salman, and sharing your words of wisdom and continued success to you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. You are informed, empowered, and can now be accountable. What were some of your takeaways from this episode? I always enjoy hearing from you, so please share. Additionally, if you have questions, hear some things that are new to you, or need some clarity on some of those things, I am here to serve. Go to our website at thecoilingsolution.com slash podcast. Right below the show notes, you'll see a comment section. Tell me about some of your takeaways from the episode. You can ask your questions. You can mention challenges in the areas that we cover, or tell me about guests you'd love to hear from. Alternatively, you can do the same through social media channels of Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Thank you as always for linking up and I look forward to seeing you next episode.